Hi, hello, and welcome, my fellow bookish witches. I am Witchy Reads, and today I am going to give you my first book review. I am so excited. I have been sitting on this book for months, and I am deep in my feelings about it. Today, we are talking about Bunny by Mona Awad. <music> This was a book club selection back, I want to say, in April. I wasn't necessarily an outlier in disliking the book, but I definitely was the most vocal about disliking it and my reasons why. First off, first impressions, the cover itself is actually okay. I think it does fit the story. It does scream a little Chuck Palahniuk to me. I want to say I've read two Chuck Palahniuk books and one I really, really enjoyed and the other I really did not. There was a third Chuck Palahniuk book that I DNR'd. I just couldn't get through it. So when I saw the cover and I it reminded me of a Chuck Palahniuk book, I was worried, and rightfully so, now that I've read it, that I wasn't going to enjoy the book. The marketing for this book was just weird. They did the this meets this comparison a few times. Just a jumbled mess of this meets this meets this. I don't think doing that is inherently bad, particularly if you're an author and you're trying to get your book picked up by an agent or a publisher. However, I feel like audiences will take certain things from those other stories stories and pull what they want out of it. And then if that book doesn't deliver on those comparisons, you then lose because the reader was expecting one thing and then got something completely different. This book was compared to both Heathers and Mean Girls. And while yes, there are similarities to those two things, they are vastly different and have vastly different emotions and things in the story. I get the Mean Girls reference. Heathers, I think they only included that because they were really trying to push that this book was dark. I personally did not think the book was dark. I also feel like whoever used the Heathers comparison to market this book wasn't 100% on what Heathers is. I think they just thought Mean Girls but dark. If you read the synopsis for Bunny, it very much wants to create this aura. Oh, everything is fine, but oh, nothing is fine, and it's going to get dark, and oh, there's a twist, and oh, you will never expect it. If you were dead set on using the X meets X comparison, Mean Girls meets Frankenstein. <laughs> Let's break down the story of Buddy. Our protagonist is Samantha Heather Mackey. She is a graduate student at Warren University, which is a placeholder for Brown. Brown is the university that AWOD attended for her MFA program, and that is what Samantha is doing at Warren. I am already a little turned off because the writer inserting themselves as the main character, also making the main character a writer. It's a trope that has been beaten to death. Pretentious white male authors have done this for centuries and I get that now it's a woman. Fine, fine, if that is what you want to do. It's just not something I enjoy. It is not a trope that I like. So Samantha is attending Warren University. She is part of an MFA program and in her cohort she is one of five women and they make a big deal about this because there has never been a cohort of all women. So yay! Trying to hammer home some type of feminist discussion or feminist stance, it just rang hollow for me. Personally, I feel the feminism was surface level at best, but an attempt was made. We are bad feminists. The four other women in the cohort with Samantha are introduced to us early on in the book. They each have two names. One is a nickname assigned by Samantha and then the other is their actual name. Initially when we are introduced to them it's strictly their nicknames that we know them by and then as Samantha goes along in the story we start to learn their actual names and then eventually you just need to start guessing who is speaking which becomes very annoying. There is Cupcake or Caroline. Samantha calls her Cupcake because she is overly sweet. She wears really bright poppy colors and she also eats cupcakes. There is Creepy Doll or Kira and Samantha just thinks that she looks like a creepy doll. There is Vignette 
or a Victoria. And this is based off of her writing style and she also is the most blunt. And then there is the Duchess or Eleanor. She is the queen bee. She wears a tiara and she kind of is just this all around rich, spoiled brat. Samantha views them as pink and frilly and girly and blonde and rich. From the jump, we are supposed to feel like Samantha doesn't care what these women think, that she despises them. But honestly, what I took away from every interaction that Samantha has with these women is that she is jealous and she very much wants to be a part of them, wants to be accepted by them. The character is showing us she is jealous and very much wants to be accepted and admired and part of this woman group while she is telling us she dislikes them, that she's not like other girls, that, oh, she's not like them at all, blah, blah, blah. She says one thing, but then acts a different way. And I very much picked up on that. I feel like a lot of the reviews point out, no, she dislikes them. She says that, but that's not how she feels. So these four women call themselves the bunnies. When they see each other in public, they always call each other bunny, so they don't even use their real names. Weird. Didn't like it. Wasn't a fan. At the beginning of the book, we are with Samantha and Ava. Ava is Samantha's best friend. We don't really know a lot about her. She's an art school dropout. She thinks she's better than everybody else. She kind of hates everybody at Warren. She thinks they're all pretentious. Fine. She wears black. She's a goth. She's supposed to be this cool person and she is Samantha's best friend. So Samantha and Ava are at this beginning of the semester party and at this party are also the bunnies. During that party, Samantha and Ava are kind of whispering under their breath talking about the bunnies. The bunnies are acting weird in their little cohesive girl mesh group and at some point the duchess makes eye contact with samantha the second that happens she's very much just like <gasps> me Ava appears to really have nothing else to do but hang out with Samantha. I really thought their relationship was toxic. They're supposed to be best friends and yet it feels like there's this weird power dynamic where Samantha feels the need to represent herself in a certain way for Ava. Like she wouldn't be cool enough if she just acted like herself. And on the flip side, Ava thinks that this persona that Samantha is showing her is the real Samantha. So when Samantha is invited by the bunnies to attend their smut salon, Ava is taken aback when she realizes that Samantha wants to go. I feel like this whole interaction was very toxic. Samantha was trying to gauge if Ava would be okay with her going to this event and Ava kind of blew her off, being very passive and petty about the whole situation. And so because of that, Samantha just decides to go. I feel like that was like the only moment that she really stood up and did her own thing and she wasn't doing something purely because Ava wanted her to, which was interesting. That goes out the window really quickly. Samantha goes to the smut salon and essentially all that happens is that the bunnies seem to get her drunk slash roofie her. It's really bizarre. She doesn't really understand what happens after the fact. What she does know is during the smut salon, she regales the girls with this fabricated tale of this high school crush where she was certain that he wanted to be with her and all this stuff. And it was all made up in her head. And we, since we are in Samantha's head, we know for a fact that she is lying. She had a crush on this guy and he wanted nothing to do with her. She tells this lie about this high school crush and then wakes up the next morning feeling like she's had the worst hung hangover in, of her life. She decides to go look for Ava and tell her what happened. It feels like she's trying to make up with Ava by gossiping about the bunnies and what went down at the smut salon, even though not much happened. She tries to find Ava, she cannot find Ava. It was this point in the book that I started to think something was off about Ava. Samantha is having the darndest time trying to reach this girl. She cannot get a hold of her via cell phone, via text, nothing. I have started to feel Ava didn't exist or that Samantha made her up. She thinks I'm in the way. My mind immediately went there. In everything going on, we quickly learn that Samantha is also an unreliable narrator. She lies a lot. And she seems to think that that's okay because she is a writer. There was always an excuse for it. This is not a situation where it's a character that is flawed and I like them because of their flaws. This is 
a situation where a character is flawed and it's frustrating to read about this character. Samantha can't find Ava. She decides to just kind of be more open to hanging out with the bunnies. They start paying attention to her more during their class. And then she is invited to the next event, which is the prom. There's this whole scene with this event. It is the best scene in this book. I thought it was hilarious. First off, it is very well written. Awad, she is a magnificent writer. I loved the writing. The writing was, it was such a great way to introduce the oddness of what was happening with the bunnies. So Samantha arrives and all the bunnies have dates at this event. So there are men there now. Samantha wasn't prepared for this. She wasn't prepared really for it to be, I guess, formal. Regardless, the bunnies whisk her away to go get a makeover. And when she comes back down, there is a knock at the door. And who is there? Rob Valencia. What? Oh my gosh, what is happening? Uh, it is her high school crush. He is saying like, oh, I made a mistake. We should have been together, blah, blah. All other things aside, if this was a real situation and this man appeared, I would find it troubling that he had been hanging on to this and decided to just randomly show up and confess his feelings. It's weird. It bothers me that Samantha doesn't immediately find it weird. <laughs> so do you guys go to Warren? I ask, downing the rest of my punch. They look at each other. One of them, Lars, I think, coughs in my face. Then Beowulf says wistfully, your beauty is nuanced and labyrinthian like a sentence by Proust. I laugh, but Beowulf looks dead serious. He raises his glass to me. I notice his punch is in a plastic sippy cup that he's wearing black leather gloves. Melanie Shingler is a whore compared to you, says the boy next to him. Blake? Pigeon toed. Bad eyeliner. I couldn't see it then because I was a fool, but I have since developed my perception. He too solemnly raises his sippy cup to me. He's also wearing black leather gloves, I see. They all are. All the men are wearing gloves. They're all in tuxes. They're all drinking from sippy cups. It's a weird scene and it's perfect because of the way the men are acting, what they are saying, the gloves, the sippy cups. Samantha is finally, finally putting it together that something is wrong, that this is not normal and maybe she should leave. As she comes to this conclusion, Rob goes off the deep end and attacks her. Samantha, I find your tree-like height erotic. The burnt sugary smell is overwhelming now. I think of a squid releasing ink. I try to release myself from his grip. That's when he starts screaming. He just opens his mouth and screams and screams, looking right at me like I'm the most horrifying thing he's ever seen. This man went from complimenting her to just screaming in her face. All the men start screaming and then Rob's head explodes. His body kind of stands there for a second and then just crumples to the floor. That's when Rob Valencia's head explodes, literally explodes. Blood and brains all over me, the walls. Blood all over the bunnies and their whimpering boys. Bits of skull falling on the hardwood floor like hail. His headless suited body remains standing before me. Then it collapses to the floor. <gasps> Samantha's left standing there with blood all over her. This is where the disservice comes in and really pushing that dark twistiness because I found this hilarious. It is well written. It is funny how Samantha is reacting, how the bunnies are reacting to this whole situation that they're trying to usher Rob Valencia out of the way to get him gone so that when he inevitably explodes, because clearly they know that's going to happen, he's not in view of everybody. That scene was the most fun I had with the book. Samantha now learns the bunnies are taking literal little fluffy bunnies and turning them into men. Transforming, transfiguration, if you will, these bunnies into human men. Oh. The problem is, is that they aren't 100% okay. They have issues. They're not functional. They can't speak on their own very well. They have to be told how to handle certain things. They're not fully complete physically, hence the black gloves for their hands. There are many bunnies that once they are turned into a man have an immediate existential crisis and start flipping out and become violent and homicidal, causing the bunnies to then take an ax and kill them. Sometimes 
it works out where the bunny is totally calm and those are the ones that get to hang out with the bunnies for a while. Inevitably, they do become violent and homicidal. The bunnies either decide to kill them or if they've just become bored with the man bunny, they release them into the wild. These bunnies that get turned into men, they call them darlings, they call them hybrids. Primarily they call them darlings. So that's what I'm going to call them going forward because it's just how many things are called bunny in this book. It gets really confusing very fast. We have this group of objectively brilliant women, part of this master's program, and all they care about is running these workshops where they take bunnies and turn them into men with the ultimate goal of wanting to create the perfect man. I believe it was Vignette talks about that she is upset that they have gone through so many iterations of these darlings and none of them have a working so absorb that. That is important to one of the characters. Again, I don't mind characters being flawed or evil. Just the way that was brought about was annoying. We're going to talk about the town that the university is in and where these characters live. It's basically kind of this innocuous small college town. There's a wooded area nearby. When the bunnies are bored of the darlings that they have created, they release them into the woods. Samantha, at this point, now knowing that this is what the bunnies are doing, has started to notice that around town there are men that look familiar that look like the men that were at the prom. They all kind of have the same characteristics. The black gloves are covering their hands, saying the same words, lines, basically not acting human. Say goodbye, Derek. Uh, goodbye. I hope we same place again very now. <laughs> His brain is wrong. A lot of them have managed to get service jobs like in a coffee shop or a retail or whatever. The issue with this, it is inevitable that they will become violent and homicidal. I am so disappointed that we learn this and then nothing comes of it. I would have completely changed my mind about the story if we had diverted all of a sudden and we started following the townsfolk having to deal with these crazy homicidal darlings that are made from bunnies. <laughs> The fact that it didn't do that is so disappointing to me. It would have been so much more fun. I personally think if you wanted to do the dark and twisty route, you should have followed this path. Granted, we are in Samantha's POV. Figure it out. There had to have been a way to figure it out where we could have followed those characters because, oh my God, characters flat out talk about the violence that's happening in this town. The fact that there is specifically a serial killer that's decapitating people. And all the while I am reading this and I'm thinking, oh my God, this group of women created these homicide maniacs and just let them loose on this town. That is objectively a better story than what we got and I wanted more. Why would you sprinkle in that amazing side story and not do anything with it? Honestly, I didn't even need much. Keep the same POV, have it follow Samantha fine. Get the beginning of each chapter, have it be a POV from the townsfolk talking about the violence going on, talking about Aunt Joe Blow was killed last week because some crazed decapitators on the loose. This place is so beautiful, you find it hard to believe that wildly violent assault happens almost daily. Rape, clubbings, stabbings, and shootings as common as finding pink champagne by the glass on bistro menus that rumors of random decapitations are on the rise. <laughs> We time jump. Samantha is fully immersed in the bunnies. She's all but forgotten about Ava. She has now become a bunny herself. She's kind of in this drug-induced haze. It's implied that the bunnies are keeping her drugged. She participates in these workshops now where she helps the bunnies create these darlings. Each workshop, a bunny gets to take a turn running the workshop. And so whatever darling is created, it is that bunny's darling. Samantha has not had the privilege to get to do that yet. It's in this this state of mind that Ava stumbles back into Samantha's life, having found her while well, walking the streets with the bunny and kind of pulls her and separates her and takes her to a diner to get her to sit down and discuss and talk about what's happening. I'm not sure how long the time jump was, if it was weeks, if it was months. And this is modern day. It did not seem like Ava was reaching out the way a best friend would and was just luck of the draw that she saw Samantha on the street. It started to add to my belief that Ava is is not real. So Ava is trying to convince Samantha that she is now part of a cult and that she needs to get out. Excuse me, are y'all with the cult? We're not a cult. 
We're an organization that promotes love. Yeah, that's okay. Samantha seems to kind of break through the fog, the haze a little bit to get where Ava is coming from and start to believe that, oh my God, maybe this is something I don't want to be a part of. Unfortunately, the plot demands that the bunnies appear and make Ava leave for some reason. It's never fully explained what convinces Ava to leave. It very much felt in that moment that the bunny showing up was very much plot driven. It did not ring true to me that just because these women show up that Ava would leave. Ava was never presented as a character that was weak and would back down. It was bad storytelling. The Duchess tells Samantha, yay, your time has come. You get to run the workshop. You are going to create the darling. So they all head back to the Duchess's house to perform a workshop. As they are going in, Samantha notices that there is a stag outside near the woods. They go inside, they do the ceremony, and it doesn't work. The bunny does not turn into a man. There is no man there. But then they look out the window and they see a man. And so they are confused. They think maybe something happened. Maybe it did work after all. So they all run outside to this man. The stag is missing. The implication is, is that this man is the darling, though the bunnies and Samantha don't seem to click that right away. The bunnies assume that it actually failed and that Samantha sucks and can't handle doing this. Samantha feels like a failure and feels like she let the bunnies down and then separates herself from them for a time. This is when we are introduced to Max. I actually don't really have an issue with him. His character makes sense to me and he follows through with everything that I think his character would do. I will clear this up now. Max is a darling. He is made from the stag and oh, 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 surprise, surprise. He is the perfect darling. He is fully human, fully man can speak, has his own mind, can come up with thoughts. He is coherent. He doesn't seem to have that urge to turn violent and homicidal. But Samantha doesn't know this yet. The bunnies don't know this yet. Samantha, feeling that she failed, leaves the bunnies in search for Ava. Of course she does, because Samantha just can't seem to be alone for like two seconds. She's wandering around. She eventually finds the abandoned house that she knows that Ava is squatting in. She goes there. Oh, Max is living there too, because Max and Ava are hooking up. Yeah, it's at this point that Samantha kind of puts two and two together, realizes that Max is her darling. Honestly, when I read this part, it felt to me that Max was the embodiment of everything that Samantha wanted to be. Up until this point, her relationship with Ava was very unhealthy, but also there was an undercurrent there that Samantha wanted to be more than friends with Ava. I do think that Samantha is bi, though it is not confirmed in the text. This is something that I am feeling just based on the character. I feel that Samantha is bi and she very much wants to be with Ava. So she created this man. In addition to that, we find out that Max has also been infiltrating the bunnies. He is doing this to sow discord within the ranks. It is very much seen when Samantha goes back to class and the bunnies aren't sitting together and they start lashing out at each other. She finds out that Max is toying with all of them. Them, implying that he will date them. They're obsessed with him and they all have fallen apart and are bickering. Any type of feminist point that was trying to be made in this book falls apart because you have this group of objectively brilliant women who were closer than friends, like sisters, and the mere inclusion of the so-called perfect man destroyed this group of friends. I just did not like that narrative. Being a best friend myself, I could never, I could never. <laughs> Samantha comes clean to Max to explain who he is or at least confront him about what he is. He seems to understand, though he's not really happy about it. Samantha is now grappling with having to tell Ava who Max is. So she does and Ava reacts by kicking Max out of the house. The implication being that she just needs time to think about the big bomb that's been dropped on her. Samantha leaves the house after confronting Max and then telling Ava who Max is. Ultimately, Samantha feels like something's up and goes back to the house only to find Max over the body of a swan. And this is where we learn that Ava was in fact not human and was Samantha's first darling made from a swan. One night where she felt exceptionally lonely, she made herself a best friend. The Duchess found out that Max is in fact a darling 
And in retaliation, the bunnies went to Ava's house and murdered her. One thing I didn't bring up, when you murder a darling, they revert back to the creature that they were made from. So every time that they have killed a man, he reverts back to a bunny. And so when Ava was murdered by the bunnies, she reverts back to a swan. This infuriates Samantha. At this point, you could say like, oh my gosh, yes, you definitely would hate these women, hate these bunnies for murdering her best friend slash would-be lover slash crush. To me, it still rings like she wants their approval and wants to be part of their group, even though she's absolutely livid with the fact that they murdered Ava. Samantha goes to the Duchess's house to confront the bunnies. They are all wearing pieces of Ava's clothing. Super cruel. We have entered pure evil territory. The Duchess confesses that she knew that Ava was a darling from the very beginning, and that was why they invited Samantha into their group to begin with, because they saw that she could make the perfect darling, and they were hoping that she could do the same for them by just being there, but it didn't work out. The only perfect darling that came out of that entire situation was Max when Samantha did it. During this whole interaction, which is happening inside the house, the bunnies notice that Max has appeared outside the house and they all fall over each other to get outside. Max just stands there and they all call him by a different name. I didn't write down the names, but they all know him by a different name, which just like shows the level of chaos that this man has wrought onto these women. They run at him and they start clawing at him because they all want a piece of him. Samantha just decides, put the final nail in the coffin. She takes the ax that they use to kill the other darlings and takes it to Max and cuts off his head. I don't believe he actually dies. He just turns back to the stag and swaggers off. The bunnies absolutely lose their minds. They cannot handle the fact that they had the perfect man and he is now essentially gone. The bunnies go absolutely feral on each other. I know this the world. <laughs> Quite honestly, it was a little funny blip of a scene for me. We cut to graduation from the master's program. Samantha gets her degree. We see the bunnies at graduation all bandaged up like the end of some corny 90s teen rom-com. Samantha walks away and goes sits by the lake where she had first met Ava as the swan. It's not a very climatic ending, but it didn't really bother me. I was happy it was over. <laughs> um, Samantha graduates alone. There is no resolution to her feelings for Ava. If the character is bi, there is no resolution to the homicidal darling bunny men that are running around town. I need the novella of the POV from the townspeople dealing with the menace that the bunnies rot on them. That is the story of Bunny. Samantha, not a fan. I thought she was a horrible person. I think she is pretentious. She thinks that she is not like the other girls. You can't sit there and cosplay being poor because you're, you're just not. And she lied. She lied so much. She was such an unreliable narrator. Everything she did reminded me of how much I disliked the character. And then there is Ava. I will say the twist of Ava being the swan did catch me off guard. It wasn't like, oh my God. Like it was just like, oh, okay. That, you know, that makes sense. I felt from the beginning that something was off with Ava. She wasn't human. She wasn't real. Like I thought it was a fight club situation where she was just part of Samantha's imagination. Technically she kind of was. She was created by Samantha. That was the nice twist in the book. It confirmed for me what I was feeling about the character. So I felt validated in that. Max. I didn't really have any qualms with Max as a character. I did like like the chaos that he did so, even though I didn't like that that was able to disrupt the bunnies' friendship and group and all of that. I will say that it made me sad to feel that he was the embodiment of what Samantha wished she could be. The fact that he got to be with Ava and I felt very strongly that that is what Samantha wanted. The fact that he was able to take down the bunnies, it wasn't Samantha, it was Max that got to take down the bunnies, got to infiltrate them and tear them apart. As much as Samantha was supposed to be this person who hated the bunnies and wanted to destroy them from within. She didn't get to do that 
technically. There were two other characters in this book that come up a couple of times. There was Jonah and then a character called the Lion. I'm honestly blanking on the guy's actual name. The Lion is a nickname that is given to this character. He is Samantha's professor. I, I never did a master's program, but when you're in a master's program, you have a, a single professor who's like a mentor. And that is who this guy is for Samantha. It reports to him if she's doing her thesis and making sure she's on time. He is the confirmation for the reader that Samantha is an unreliable narrator. There is a whole subplot of her relationship with this professor in that they were really close. They had a very nice teacher-student relationship that she could confide in him, that he was very much her mentor and she looked up to him. And then starting at the beginning of this year, he just starts ignoring her, doesn't want anything to do with her. She feels like because of that sudden shift that people are gonna start thinking that something went on between them that their relationship was more than student teacher was inappropriate but you really start to feel that this is all in her head that she thought maybe the relationship was inappropriate even though nothing horrible happened the most egregious thing that happened was that at one night she needed a ride home and he offered her a ride home she got in his car he drove and she he took her home and that's all that happened and i believe as he's driving her home she sees the bunnies walking on the street and they see her personally for me what i think happened is that samantha started acting weird for this teacher and made it uncomfortable for him even though nothing nothing was happening between them and he just decided to be the adult in the situation and be like mm, okay i'm setting a boundary and we are going to stop this even though this is innocent we're going to stop this because clearly you don't think it's innocent three of the members in my book club have done a master's program i know one for a fact like spoke on this the relationship that samantha has with her professor is 100 percent normal and there is nothing weird about it at that point if you're in a master's program you are in your mid-20s you are a full-fledged adult getting a ride home going out for drinks with your professor, especially the one that's your mentor, completely normal and completely innocent. The other character is Jonah. He is another MFA student, but he is in the poetry cohort. He doesn't come up a lot. He kind of just has run-ins with Samantha when Ava isn't around or when the bunnies aren't around. What's interesting about his character is that he is a real life flesh and bone human and someone that enjoys Samantha's company and wants to hang out with her more, he legit could be a real best friend for her. And she is so obsessed and blind, like she's obsessed with the bunnies and blinded by Ava that she doesn't see this person who could be a good influence for her and a good friend. I actually think he's probably the best character in this whole book. It would have been nice if they could have been friends. I think the writing is phenomenal. Awad is an amazing writer. It's 305 pages. It was a super quick read. It flows great. I just was not a fan of the story and I couldn't get behind Samantha as a main character. I couldn't get behind the choices she made. I really wish the story had followed somebody else. I definitely would have rather gotten POVs from the townsfolk dealing with the homicidal darlings. I would have wanted more interpersonal growth from Samantha. I would have wanted to see her change as a character. I, I understand the point of Max as far as what the story was being told, but honestly, I wish we could have cut Max out and had the big like revelation be that she discovered her feelings for Ava, her true feelings, and got to express that. Basically, I wanted more murder and more sapphic. <laughs> I gave the book a two star out of five. This is mainly to do with Awad's writing. A good portion of that rating is coming from that scene for the, uh, the prom event. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. It was nice to just kind of lay it bare and get it out there. <laughs> if you liked this book review, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. If you want to follow me on um, any of my socials to keep updated on books that I'm reading. Until next time, thank you for joining me on my magical journey.